When you're in the airport getting checked in and ready to fly, your mind is probably on other things. You're thinking about the amazing holiday you're about to go on, or hoping that the airline food isn't going to be too bad. You're probably not wondering why the airport is designed the way it is. The fact is, in airports, nothing is an accident. Everything you see in an airport has a purpose. Here's our top 10 ways airports are designed the way they are and why. Amazing! Number 10. Signs. When you're at the airport, you rely on signs to point you in the right direction. As a result, a lot of thought has gone into them. 75% of signs in airports are in the fonts Helvetica, Frutiger, or Clearview. These fonts are all sans serif, so they're easier to read from a distance. The size of the font is important too. Guidelines say every inch of height added to a letter adds an extra 40 feet to its visibility so a three inch high letter would be visible from 120 feet away. Many airports have their own house style of signs, such as a specific shape or color scheme. This subliminally keeps the traveler on the right track. If the signs look different, you're probably in the wrong place. Finally, new airports tend to be designed with big windows which let in a lot of natural light. I'll explain why later. This means that LED screens showing flight information have to be very high powered, so travelers can read them easily. Number nine, walkways. As you'll see, the reason for many of these designs being the way they are is to prize as much money out of the traveler as possible. Airport designers try every trick in the book to try and get us to spend, spend, spend when we're about to fly. One especially sneaky trick is installing walkways that curve from right to left. The reason for this is that most humans are right-handed. Most countries drive on the right, and we spend more time looking right than left. If you're right-handed, you will pull your suitcase with your right hand, and will involuntarily walk to your left because of the imbalance. So, if the walkway curves to the left, it's easier for you to walk on it. Plus, if the shops are on the right side, your head will turn that way and you're more likely to see them and buy things. Deviously clever. Number 8. The Golden Hour Still on money making, let's explain the concept of the golden hour. The golden hour is what airport managers call the first hour after you've cleared security. You've checked in your luggage, and you've completed the queuing and rigmarole of going through security. You feel like the weight is off your shoulders. This is the hour when you may want to spend some serious money, and the airports want to make it as easy for you as possible. Sometimes, however, their methods stray into the realms of subliminal coercion. The shops use black glittery floor tiles that draw the eye. In Birmingham Airport, they even use these tiles to lead you past the duty-free shop. Also, in many airports, the first shop you see once you clear security is the duty-free and the perfume section. This is because in those precious euphoric first few seconds of the golden hour, they want you to see the products with the biggest profit margin, expensive designer perfume. Number seven, windows and lights. Modern airports tend to be designed with lots of glass, such as this one in Indianapolis. Everywhere you turn in new airports, there are huge windows, especially once you're through security, where you can usually look straight onto the tarmac. There are a number of reasons for this trend. Firstly, people like natural light. It's de-stressing. Secondly, according to research in the retail sector, natural light makes you more likely to buy things. Finally, it helps people find their way. One of the main aims of airport design is wayfinding, helping people navigate their way from the door to check in through security to their gate and onto the plane as easily as possible. A big window telling you where the planes are seems to really help with that. In fact, anything that can help with wayfinding is popular with airport designers. See how in Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, the lights point the way from the entrance to the check-in desk, reflecting off the tiled floor so you can follow them easier. Even the check-in desks are slanted, acting as an arrow pointing to the security zone. You're subliminally moved in the right direction. Number six, departures and arrivals. In most airports, certainly the larger and more modern ones, arrivals is on the ground floor and departures is on the floor above. The main reason why this design works is gravity. Planes land on the ground full of suitcases and it's a lot less effort to move the luggage downwards from the plane to the ground than it would be to move it up to a higher floor. Another reason is that people spend more time with departures than arrivals, so they need more space. The space for departures can extend upwards when the airport wants to build more places for you to spend money. When people arrive at an airport, they just want to get their luggage and leave, and the design of the airport reflects this. No bright lights, flashy shops, or seating areas. Just as short and straight a journey as possible, from plane to carousel to customs to the exit. Number five, mobile. 
If you've traveled on a plane in the last few years, you'll know you now have the option to do everything via your phone. You can check in online, print your own baggage tag, and pull it on your luggage yourself. You can store your boarding pass on your phone. You can scan it at the gate and walk straight onto the plane. Airports have been designed to accommodate these innovations. There are scanners, self-service machines, and automated kiosks all over airports today. There are, as usual, many reasons why airports want to push you to use mobile technology instead of human beings. Firstly, it's quicker. Automated check-in is around 25% faster than a human baggage checker. It also helps regulate the flow of people, reducing the long queues that used to snake around airports. It also distresses the traveler. But again, as usual, it comes down to money. An automated check-in desk costs a lot less than a human being. Plus, if you're going through check-in and security quicker, you have more time to spend money in the shops. Number four, security. Airports are unfortunately prime targets for terrorists, with attackers hitting terminals in Belgium and Turkey over the last couple of years. As a result, airport designers have thought long and hard about how they can use design to prevent future atrocities. New airports have copied the security measures employed by Las Vegas casinos, where eyes in the sky track every inch of the area. Gone are the smaller partition terminals and columns where people or things can be hidden. Nowadays, airport terminals are wide open spaces where it's hard to do something and not be spotted. The only exception is the customs area, once you've collected your luggage and are trying to leave the airport. In airports like Heathrow and Cape Town, those areas are designed to be narrow and curly, like a slalom course. This is so people who may be carrying something they shouldn't can't run through customs without being spotted by the guards. It also creates a subliminal feeling of being enclosed. If someone is nervous, they may show it in their movements or facial expressions, and the guards will pick up on that. Number three, floors. Even the floors in airports are designed for a purpose. Firstly, there's wayfinding. In Atlanta, the floor tiles at check-in are colored to lead you through the airport to the ticket counters. In Heathrow, when you get to a place where the traveler has to do something, such as check-in or security, the tiles are colored gray. Psychologically, gray is a neutral and impartial color, neither happy nor sad. It subliminally tells you that it's time for business. Then you have the use of carpeting. When you're walking on the walkway to your gate, the floor is always hard. When you reach the gate, it's always carpeted, with seating freely available. This has two purposes. When you see carpet and chairs, you subconsciously feel relaxed. This is a good way to feel before you get on a long flight. Also, it tells people where to sit for maximum efficiency. People don't sit on the hard floor, getting in the way of people walking past. Number two, art. Have you ever wondered why modern airports often contain giant works of art like this one in Vancouver or this one in Heathrow? There are many reasons. Firstly, they give a good impression of the airport to people as they enter the country. An airport is the gateway to the nation and first impressions last. Secondly, they help with wayfinding. Where's the easiest place to meet your friend at Sacramento Airport before your holiday? Under the giant rabbit, of course. Another way airports heard you is using travelators. They're not new. Moving walkways have been in airports since 1958. Travelers like them because they take the strain out of walking to your gate, even though they're not much faster than walking pace. However, they also regulate the amount of people arriving at the gate, stopping a huge rush of people turning up at the same time. It's a human motorway. Number one, queues. When you go to the airport, you're going to have to queue. It's a fact of life. No one likes to queue, except maybe the British. When people queue, their stress levels rise. They get anxious. That's not the kind of mood you want to be in an airport. In an attempt to make the queuing slightly more bearable, most airports now operate a single queuing system. They're serpentine, snaking around the security hall, passport control, or check-in area. Gone are the days where there are 10 check-in desks or 10 smaller queues. The reason for this is that it's fairer. The first people who join the queue are the first to be attended to. It relieves anxiety, as you're not looking at the other queues wondering whether you should have joined a different one. It stops queue jumping and people swapping around between the lines, causing arguments and accidents. All in all, it makes the queue a better place. Which design element did you find the most interesting? Can you think of any more? Leave me a comment down below to let me know. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching.